Thank you for staying, my guest. As I've already said, Honorable Member of Parliament for Tamale Central, former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, former Minister for Roads and Highways, good friend and uh, a dear brother, Inu Safuseni, private legal practitioner as well. Uh, Alaji, you're welcome. Thank you, Nana. Thank and you. Thank you. Grateful you are to join us today, but today something, you know, history was made yes. between the Ashantis and the Achims. Mm. Uh, some historical wars and political rumbling, whatever it is, there was always this, you know, simmering tension. But today they seem to have smoked the peace pipe and, uh, and broken bread together to signify that unity. Just a preliminary comment on the, on the event. I think that both the Ashanti Empire and the Achim, I think they were the dangerous, were they? Or no. they were the dangerous? No, no. The, the dangerous were the ones that were tormenting the Ashantis. Ashantis, yes. yes. So yeah. where are the dangerous now? Uh, they have now shrunk. They're still there. They, they, they've now shrunk into... They are those around the Boise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're not, they're not as powerful as, as they were. As they were. Yes. Yeah, as they were. Now, the Achims and the uh, Ashantis have been two great empires, two mm. great kingdoms. I mean, uh, the, if you put some history, uh, uh, history to the, uh, uh, their power uh, during the reign of the uh, colonialists, uh, you will see clearly that whereas the Ashanti's power the, was predominantly in their traditional setup, and they set up the Ashanti state precisely like a modern day state mm. where states that were conquered were assimilated mm -hmm. okay and then chiefs were sent to preside over them mm -hmm. okay and ensure that they continue to atone tenancy and pledge and swear the oath of uh, allegiance to the Ashanti mm -hmm. so it was a huge kingdom they are the reign of the Ashanti kingdom spread up to the the northern territories mm -hmm. uh, so it was huge and you found the Akim Su's uh, power, relevance, lay in tapping into the white man's education. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so you will see clearly that they were the, the people who found some working relationship with the white colonial masters. Mm -hmm. And so their dominance and superiority came from imbibing the white man's way of life and also the new civilization that has been brought. Mm -hmm. So it should not surprise you to see that, and, and we should put all this in context, whereas the Achims, and you can relate it to the Prempe, the, the, his, the story of the Ashantihini who was exiled. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Ashantis thought and felt that they were a kingdom unto themselves and they should not be under the colonial domination of the foreign powers the achims struck a working relationship mm, mm -hmm. with them and 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 the position of the achim kingdom was so strategic that they served as middlemen mm. between the hinterland and the coast mm. uh, but all of them all of them they are reign and Supremacy was founded on slavery. Mm. I mean, be able to sell slaves mm -hmm. to the, the colonialists. Uh, and so this rivalry existed for a very long time. And now that the uh, Ashantis and the Achims have found reason to collaborate in ways that will give some prominence to their kingdoms, uh, it can only be good news. The only, the only sad commentary I have is why the whole celebration has been tied to the 75th passing away of Uforiata. Now, because when you bring it within contemporary politics, it looks like all what we had earlier on suspected Nana Kufado of uh, in, in his desire intending to lead this country 
was to venerate his ancestors. It's telling out to be true. But his ancestors have led, uh, you know, uh, a good track record to be celebrated. Yes, yes, but th that is, but but that was what we saw. That was what we thought was the driving force behind his claim or his his ambition to lead this country. Has that not been that and any, I don't want to use tribe, but any person that ever ascends the throne, you tend to find that the, wherever he comes from, uh, you know, when Lee Man was in power, you find that there will be a bit more northern prominence in government. When uh, Jerry Rollins is in power, you find that a bit more Voltarians are in power. When Kufour was in power, well, Ashanti. I mean, has it not been the trend since uh, in Kruma where? Well, I'm not even talking about the pronounced form of family and friends government that we have experienced now. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. I'm mm -hmm. just talking about the veneration, mm -hmm. the celebration of the ancestors of the president. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw earlier on in the year his attempt to uh, uh, resurrect Gibi Dankwa, mm -hmm. he went to his tomb or grave and wept, bringing immediacy to the death of Gibi Dankwa when he died so many years ago. Mm -hmm. Today we are seeing again uh, the, the celebration of the life of Ofreata, who, when you looked in the gathering, uh, you you could well have concluded that not many people who were there were alive when J.B. Dunga, I mean, when Ufarata died. No, 75 years ago, yes. Uh, ago, yes, uh, yeah. Even if you were alive, you, you were a baby. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and today again, you see another attempt by His Excellency the President. He's made it a national affair. And you see today that there has been another conscious, deliberate attempt to resurrect his... But would it, wouldn't you do the same? I mean, if you, if you, if you had a grandfather or grand-uncle who in Tamale fought or did something really significant, and you, you, know, you came into prominence now as an MP, I mean, would you not do something because it is for what he did that maybe you are now who you are? Consistency is very important. Sincerity. And certainty is also important in shaping your character and conduct. We've had Nana Kupadu, prominent lawyer in this country. No one remembers any time that Nana Kupadu has devoted part of his time as a legal practitioner to venerate his uncle. No one, no one, even in parliament. No, but you don't even you don't even see speeches of Nana Kupadu or is statements made on the floor of the house of Nana Kupadu venerating or, in any case, elogizing the, the no, lives that, that of... Would be a bit unfair. That would be a bit unfair. I think the Achins are quite, you know, immediately jumped to Oforiata and jumped to JB. Yeah. That's always been an issue. But maybe because now he's president. Yes! It adds extra... That's exactly what I'm the talking the about. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. If, in fact, you've captured the sense of what I'm trying to put across. Mm -hmm. That now that he's president, it appears to that there is now a deliberate attempt to give these people, even though they already they are already part of the history of this country. Give it on no doubt, is part of the history of this country. Of Oriata, no doubt, part of the history of this country. But there is now some immediacy brought into their lives mm -hmm. by reason of the fact that their son has become the president of the country. Posterity will judge us, right? <laughs> very, very Posterity well. will judge us. <laughs> but, yeah.